called to be there. We can get out of sync so easy. And so the first thing that you need to do is take the time with the Lord every day in the morning. Make an appointed time with him. Those of you who are taking my class on Dimensions of Prayer, di Dialoguing with Him, it starts Wednesday evening. That's an invitation. Uh, that's one of the things we'll talk about. I want you to have an appointed time because if you don't, there are things that will always seemingly get in the way. Sometimes we get phone calls starting at 5 a.m., Okay, and we could just say, you know, gosh, I have this thing I really need to take care of. Instead of seeing that as an appointment that is a non-negotiable for you. Secondly, your time corporately when we come together is very important. Why? Because scripture says that in the last days you need to come together even more so. What it's saying is that we need to continue to refocus and refocus because of all those things that try to get in the way. Thirdly, there are certain things on that um, opportunity calendar that you need to look at and say, Lord, what things are for me? Well, I know you're talking to me about speaking and spending time with you, so maybe I'm called to take that course on Wednesdays, and I'm going to put that on my calendar for the next four Wednesdays. I don't know what it is for you, but I encourage you at the beginning of a new month to take that time and to make sure that you're asking the Lord what to do with it. Okay, that's a really really good thing to do and it will save you from a lot of distractions that come because automatically you have certain blocks of time that are for the Lord and the enemy just those those uh, things just fall away that he tries to bring to distract you so that's one thing Todd White is coming uh, the first week in October and the reason I'm bringing it up today is because as of Wednesday um, there was someone who made a very large donation to cut the price of it in half it was $80, and it becomes $40 for a four-day school, Wednesday night till Saturday. I know that you may not be able to make all of those times. Some of them are day times. Some people have scheduled a couple days off of personal time. But I want to encourage you that whatever part you can come to be a part of, to come and see uh, one of the um, major evangelists on the earth today and what is happening in his midst He's coming into this city. God is bringing him to our city. That's not an accident. And so I want you to have that opportunity. And the frugal woman that I am, uh, I, I'm willing to do a group sign up today if you're going to come. It's $40 a person. So if you have the money today, I'll take it. But if you don't have it till next week, that's okay. But I will sign you up today so you get the half price ticket. I really believe we're called to be a part of it. I really believe we're called to not only support it, but to be under that umbrella of receiving a gift in the body that is so um, powerfully demonstrating God's work on the earth today. And we're called to pick up that anointing. It's a gift to our city. And so if you present yourself into that atmosphere, that gift now comes into you. Do you understand that? God doesn't just say, you know, I'm going to throw all these things out there and see if they bite. What he's saying is, I have gift after gift and wave after wave of blessing for you. Come and receive it. It's just like if someone says, I have a tree full of presents for you, but if you never go to get them, you never get that gift. So you have to present yourself. And so that opportunity is something that I feel is very timely in our region. We're about to turn outward. This process of getting settled and established where everybody could fit, where we could creatively do some new things, like you saw with Janet Hume, which was a perfect opportunity to have someone come where we could do something uh, here corporately, but also activate um, the artists in our midst uh, and with a, a clinic in the other side of the building. We couldn't do that before with where we were. So God has placed us strategically for such a time as this. In this season, this is where we are. Now it's time to find out what he has for us to do. So that's our vision. That's our desire. And these waves of, of blessing that are coming into our area, we want to be able to take part of. There's also a prayer meeting. You'll see that on the calendar for those of you who know you have a gift to pray. Uh, from the 20th to the 30th, ending with Heidi Baker. And you saw, do you remember the Mozambique video? That's who is coming um, on October 2nd. So I tell you these things ahead of time, number one, so you can block the time. You can make that plan. Um, God wants to uh, do some great things for you and through you in this season. 
And again, the summer season is one of those kind of seasons that we can kind of lose some of our structural way. And that's okay to kind of get a break maybe from some of the things. Um, you know, kids come out of school and so things have to change to some degree. But now we want to turn and we want to refocus our strength and energy uh, toward what the Lord would want us to do. I want to talk briefly about what is happening down in Texas. Um, I have a very dear friend named Dr. Edward Smith who had a ministry for years called Victim Relief, and it's the Christian form of Red Cross, I guess is what I can say. Um, I don't say this to be cruel in any manner, but um, because some organizations are very, very large, a lot of the monies go into administration. They don't go to the people. And so um, uh, Dr. Smith, 100% um, of the monies go to the people. And so right now he's boots on the ground. He's down there finding out the needs of the people and the communities. And so we have direct access, if you will, to know what we can do to be a blessing. So I plant that seed, if there's anything that you would like to do, physically or financially, uh, in the days to come, you can come and talk to me. There's that opportunity as well. Um, Bill Garvey, just to tell you the sobriety of the seriousness of it, was uh, sent there um, yesterday. He left yesterday indefinitely. So pray for him. Um, the, there's all-out forces going there, and he's not even in search and rescue anymore, but they took him at, as well. So, you know, we need to be aware this is a very big, large-scale thing. And unfortunately, we'll hear more of these things in, in the earth in the future. So what is our part? You know, um, I um, pray actually for Dr. Smith to come because some of you have a call for spiritual search and rescue. And he has a program where people can literally be trained that when there are even fires, accidents, that you can be um, uh, going out with first responders to minister to the people in need. Um, and some of you have that calling. So God wants to turn us out and there are many, many ways that that can be seen and, and viewed. Um, so I just wanted you to be aware of that opportunity as well. Uh, how am I doing? I to think if there's anything else uh, on there. Amen. Thank you. Amen. One of the ways that our fruit develops is by using our giftings. When we utilize who God has made us to be, things grow. Um, our fruit grows. We become more like Jesus. But it doesn't happen by a mental ascent. It's not like, oh, that sounds good, but it's not for me. There are places that God wants to position us to truly impact this earth. Glasses. Glasses. Reminder notes. That's the clipboard. Got a clipboard. You want a clipboard? Mm -hmm. okay. And I think I am just about done. No. I'm not. Family talk. Family, family talk. talk. Forget this announcement dreary thing. This is family talk. Amen. That's right. Amen. Don't look as excited as me. <laughs> Quality family talks produces life. Quality family talk. Reason why? <laughs> the reason why there isn't a lot of family talks. What? Huh? Oh, do I need a microphone? Mm -hmm. The reason there is not a lot of family conversation is because some of the family conversation is negative, dreary, and deadly, so we avoid that, and the Lord wants to turn that around. Amen. Say, it's time for turnaround. Yes, amen. And I'm not kidding either, and that's not clever. That's the Spirit of the Lord saying, it's time for turnaround. You're, I said it last Sunday, you're a turnaround agent when you cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Somebody said to me yesterday, I was ministering to at Dunkin' Donuts. What an amazing place to coach and counsel peace, people, Dunkin' Donuts. I walked out of there and the Holy Spirit said, you know how everybody says you're loud when you talk? You are ministering to everybody in Dunkin' Donuts and you didn't even know about it. And I didn't know about it. I was in the zone. I was focused on... on saying and doing exactly what the Spirit of God said. And I walked out of there. It was, it was like, oh, wow, I wonder how many other people got set free. I'm so excited to hear what happens. <clears throat> I got a little distracted with that story. Sorry about that. Yeah. 
you don't have quality communion and union with Jesus unless you have quality communion and union with each other. The Bible says, don't say that you love God if you don't love your brother and sister right next to you. One of the things I didn't get to say before the communion is Apostle Paul addressed the Corinthians church. I didn't feel uh, to say it at that particular point, but I will say it now as a maturing, equipping moment so you'll be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He addressed the Corinthian church and he said, don't take communion in an unworthy manner. One of the things he was saying is, first of all, let me retract that. You're supposed to be connected as a body when you take communion. You cannot have an individual life with Jesus without a horizontal connected life with his body. That would be like saying you could have a head without a body and walk around. We're not called to be chickens with our head cut, or, cut off. I was told by my father that that's true. You cut the head of the chicken and the body keeps running around. He didn't eat chicken for years because he grew up on a farm. That's not how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be connected with the head and connected with the body and be one. Say one. one. That's why over and over in the Bible it says, watch out, pay attention, be alert, forgive, love. Don't let offenses get in. Don't get those little sand of grains stay in there. Stay connected. The Lord is looking for connection with him and with each other. Make sure that's happening in your life and fight for that connectedness. And don't excuse or accept anything else because the Lord is not excusing or accepting that. He's looking for us to fight for that position in faith. Stay connected with him and each other. Family talks, like my wife is so anointed to do, are as in just as important as anything else that happened up here on the stage today. Because it causes a clarity to come and clarity is necessary for connection. That was good, Pastor Skip. That, yeah, that was you know, good. that was really good. <laughs> that was good. If that, if that wasn't so phenomenally important, why do you think the em enemy would work to cause separation and confusion? It says in the Bible that the Satan, the devil, is the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. well, what does that mean? He is the one creating all the strife and the confusion so that then there's no connection, there's no clarity. So the Lord is the author of clarity. My wife is amazing at doing that. She tackles some of the biggest subjects as well as Lisa Perucio. Come on up here, Lisa. And we're so glad that Lisa came back from Ireland with her husband. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> They went together and they came back together. That is such a testimony. With all your children came back too. That is a family testimony. That's awesome. That's excellent. No, I'm going to take the ball on this one. Oh, you want to talk about the tag seal? You're more anointed to talk about tag seals than okay, I Okay, real quick. So, you know what? We could really just shut down and say, oh, a tag seal. I don't like them and I certainly don't need one. Yes, you do. Let me tell you why. Because the Lord is saying it's time to get rid of the baggage. And I believe that there are people who have a lot of stuff hanging around you're not supposed to have. And I, you know, could give you a list very long of why I don't need to be involved in that this week. Um, and I won't. But the bottom line is, is that I am going to personally endeavor to make an effort to just go through my things, my house, and say, Holy Spirit, what do I need to purge? What do I need to get rid of? For two reasons. One, because I don't need any extra to hold on to and to take care of and to spend my time maintaining. And even if it was one box, in, don't use the excuse I could give you 20. Just do one. Do something. Right. And then secondly, um, there are people here who need things. And I love the book of Acts. And one of the reasons I do is because it talks about that the New Testament Christian shares amongst each other what is common and what is good. I can't tell you what a blessing it is for us that, you know, last week when we were moving things, Tony saw, he, hey, there's a stove here. I need it. Great. Let's get it to you. That was Everybody, so exciting. Yes. It was so awesome. I love giving. I live to give. It's so awesome. Tony says, hey, is that stove? Can that be used? And I, my stove doesn't work. 
take it. I love having stuff that I can give to people. So it it's isn't awesome. about selling, you know, we're not standing up here saying we want to raise $500, okay, because there's easier ways to do that. Amen. <laughs> yeah, ties and offerings is ties the way. Ties and offerings is the way. That's right. That's why we don't, you don't hear us do a lot of fundraisers because that's not God's way. Um, God's way is that we, we give back in love. And I'll leave Tag that sales. One of the cool things, it's my turn now. Tag sales. <laughs> see, everybody needs to be delivered of I can't. I don't have. <laughs> don't ever come to offering time and say you don't have anything. I saw a Coke can on the parking lot. You could go down to the store, redeem it, and put a nickel in the basket. You've got to kill those things because they're killing you. So, so we want to be able to give back. This isn't about a big fundraiser. This is about giving back to the community. There are people who have needs. And so if, if people come, if there are things that are coming that you need, please, we want you to have them. Um, but everybody has something, I believe, that they can do. So we're going to do that on Saturday because it's supposed to be not a long, drawn-out thing. It's like, get it, get it out of my house, get it here, get it out, and then get it to people who need it. Another great opportunity, and I don't know if Lisa's going to say this because she's so brilliant, but just in case she is, I'm shortening her time on the microphone. Uh, and that is that we talked about carpet a couple times. Yeah. There's holes in the carpet. Underneath your feet. This carpet's 25 years old. Okay. We feel like the Lord is spo we're supposed to take $10,000, which is about all we have, from the sale of the building. And instead of putting it all on the congregation, use it towards the $14,000 for the carpet. I say that's a pretty good deal. Yes. We don't have to raise $14,000 or twelve five, whatever it is now. But we haven't had any responding to this situation. So as pastors, we think, hmm, maybe we're not supposed to replace the carpet in the sanctuary that's 25 years old that has holes in it. And I'm willing to accept that if that's what the word of the Lord is. See, sometimes as pastors and as leaders, leadership, you feel like Moses. You have a word, you give a word, but then there's no response. So you go back to the Lord and you say, did I give the right word or not? And so me and my wife, as well as we're going to be processing with the leadership team, all right, this is the season to replace the carpet because we're not getting any response. And so I would like you to help us get clarity. I would like you to take serious the family talks. And I would like you to just pray. Say, Lord, is there something that I'm supposed to do about the fundraiser? Maybe he'll say, hey, bring that stuff to the tag sale. We're going to sell it. We're not going to give it away. And we can use that towards the carpet. That may be the creative idea. Maybe he's helping you learn how to be a giver because you're too afraid or stuck that you can't give during the anointed time that Lisa always encourages us to. I don't know. But I do know God is amazing. And the more you practice opening up your heart to him, the cooler it gets. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. So it's good to be back. Hallelujah. Amen.